What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. By goal. I pronounce you. By wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to your Partner in Success Radio, hosted by serial entrepreneur Denise Griffiths. Denise offers a full menu of on-the-web services for all your online needs. Denise and her team of virtual assistants can help manage your online business, including social media channels, blogs, web portals, and more. YourOfficeOnTheWeb.com is a comprehensive resource to help you combine the power of your brand, your connections, and innovative ideas to develop a full online strategy that can guarantee a strong, profitable impact on your business. Good morning and welcome to your Partner in Success Radio. I'm your host, Denise Griffiths, and each week I'm honored to share the microphone with the most interesting people. These are business leaders who have wonderful stories to share, and they are excited to freely share their journeys, their business wisdom, tips, and actionable advice. In short, they are here to help us shorten our learning curve as we navigate the know, like, and trust economy. In fact, my guests are so compelling and so insightful that this podcast was recently written up on Inc.com as one of the best business podcasts you need to be listening to now and has been mentioned on Entrepreneur and MSNBC. Our topic today is an important one, finding and dominating your life's purpose with the fitness industry's leading consultant for marketing, business systems, and development, Bedros Killian. Bedros is the founder and CEO of Fitbody Bootcamp, an indoor fitness bootcamp franchise that was placed on the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest-growing private companies in 2016. And that franchise also won FranchiseRankings.com, Best Fitness Franchise for 2016, and was placed in Entrepreneur Magazine's Top 15 Franchises for 2015. Bedros is also the fitness industry's leading consultant for marketing, as I said earlier, business systems and development. He has a lot to teach us. You don't have to be in the fitness industry to learn from him. Trust me on this. His blogs, products, books, and live events help tens of thousands of fitness professionals and business owners around the world build more robust and profitable systems. He's also been featured as a host and expert on Spike's TV, Spike TV's, I can do this, Jim Rescue, and he's also known as the hidden genius behind many coaching and consulting clients on hit TV shows featured on ABC, NBC, Spike TV, and on top of the New York Times bestseller list. Bedros, good morning. Welcome to your Partner in Success Radio. Yeah. Hmm, looks like we might have lost him. He's having trouble calling in. He was here a moment ago and then it kind of disappeared. I have to tell you that we're having a bit of a weather event here in the Gulf of, you know, I live very, very close to the Gulf of Mexico. And if you're paying attention to the news, you understand that Hurricane Harvey is kind of bearing down on the Gulf. So I suspect that we're having some intermittent uh, internet problems. Looks like he might be back. Let me see. Bedros, are you back? I am back. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> I was How just are you? Explain- I'm good. I was just explaining to our audience that you were here and then you weren't, and I suspect that it's part of a problem that we're having in the Gulf of Mexico with Hurricane Harvey. We're, you know, I think Hurricane we're having Harvey intermittent has problems. Been yes. Yep. Yes, it is. probably yes. is. It's on its way. So I am so glad you're here. We scheduled this quite a number of weeks, a month or so ago, and I've really been looking forward to it because I think I mentioned to you in the the pre-interview, I've been aware of you for a very long time. A lot of my clients are in the fitness industry. And, of course, as a marketer, I've been fascinated with the work that you've done in the marketing industry. So we have a lot to chat about. I'm really excited. Well, I do appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you. I mean, I know you're busy. So listen, before we get real, you know, really going on this, tell the audience a bit about yourself that I may have missed in the intro, and then we can just get moving, because I have a ton of questions for you. 
Sure thing. Sure thing. So, so really uh, the, the way I, I describe myself these days is the way that my videographer one day described me. And he said, you know, you're the immigrant edge and the American dream. And his name is Rob. And I said, Rob, tell me more. He said, you know, you come from this foreign country. You, you came here with no money. You didn't speak the language, didn't understand the culture. Your family escaped communist Russia. And you have this amazing sense of optimism. And you know, I just see the world through my eyes. So I don't realize that I have an amazing sense of optimism. I just know what my father told me when we escaped Soviet Union and came to the United States in 1980 when I was a six-year-old child. And he said, as long as you serve this country, it will take care of you by way of money, meaning, and influence. And so I've lived a life of service. And, 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 you know, some always say, well, did your father brainwash you into that? And and if he did, it was a it was a positive brainwashing, so I'm okay with it. But, you know, so as I grew up, I understood service and what paying, paying it forward was all about. And the more I served, the better I've done in this, in this amazing country of ours. And I've done it all in the fitness industry, which is what changed my life as a young teenager when I was 30 pounds overweight and I wanted to go to uh, the high school prom. So I decided I'm going to work out that summer, the summer before prom, and get in shape and eat right so that I can, you know, have the confidence to ask a girl out to the prom. So while I got in great shape, I never had the confidence to ask a girl out to the prom, but it completely changed the trajectory of my life and uh, put me into the fitness business world. And today I've coached and consulted, you name the fitness brand and fitness celebrity, and they're probably my client. Oh, I know. I've been on your mailing list for many years. I mean, I've been, like I said in the intro, I've been aware of you for a very long time. And when um, when the opportunity popped up for me to interview, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because you have created, and I love your story, by the way, and I'm so glad that you love this country. I am a passionate, passionate admirer of America and all that she does, and I'm so glad that you do as well. But when the opportunity came up for me to, to talk with you, I said, oh, gosh, yeah, because you are, and not just in the fitness industry, but you're an extraordinary marketer. And, you know, building systems, I think, is something that you do very, very well. And so many people need this, not just necessarily the fitness system, but I think you have a lot to share with the general business audience about building systems and about serving and just whatever you want to talk about. This is your show as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, I do appreciate that. And in fact, you're, you're right. These days, my customer base, my clientele base, the stages that I speak on are more non-fitness related than fitness related. They're mainly general business from you know, real estate to financial networks to um, New York Times bestselling authors today are my, my coaching clients who want to make a bigger impact and, and income at the same time. And so I've kind of figured out that most entrepreneurs, and this is from my own personal journey, are lacking three very specific things to help them reach their fullest potential in business. And so many of us as entrepreneurs have an idea. We usually realize that we are unemployable, that we are not meant to have a nine to five job and we are dreamers. We have these ideas and we say, you know, by golly, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and create a solution to a problem that I believe exists. And that solution could be in the form of a service uh, or a product, and that business then always will reach a point with only a few exceptions where it's spinning its wheel over and over again. In fact, we even saw this with Apple when Steve Jobs was let go and rehired, and most people don't realize why he was rehired, and after I go through these three things, you'll see. But most entrepreneurs will build their business. It will start doing okay, but then they start spinning their wheels. They know that there's competition. They know they have greater potential of market share and income impact influence, but they somehow can't get it. And they start what I call going through this phase of suffering in silence. And it could be anxiety and overwhelm. And it could be, you know, when business is doing well, the family life is not. Uh, could be the inner demons of, I've got so much going on, I think I'm going to lose it. And so as I started to study what was going on with me in 2012, as I was going through massive anxiety attacks, uh, uh, depression, I knew that my business had greater potential, but I didn't know how to reach that potential with my franchise. I started to do some self, 
evaluation and found that, holy cow, what I'm experiencing is something that many entrepreneurs experience, this, this sense of overwhelm, the suffering in silence, anxiety attacks, uh, depression, in and out of depression. And so I quickly a- asked myself, what's happening? And over the next three years, from 2012 to 2015, um, w- which is why as you started to rattle off you know, our accomplishments with our business, it was from 2015 on. And in fact, we just won Inc. 5000's uh, fastest growing company again uh, for the second year in a row. And so it's funny that you, know, I'll, you launch a business and it does okay, but you're struggling and stressing out. But until you accomplish these three things. And so I call these three things manning up. You know, I finally manned up as an entrepreneur. And when we think of the word man up, you know, we usually hear it in a, in a movie or a sitcom, like, hey, 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 buddy, man up and, and, you know, go talk to your boss about that raise or, hey, man up and, and go after the girl of your dreams. But there's a, there's a man up process that takes place as an entrepreneur. And the way I define man up is to stop making excuses, take control of the situation, and reach your fullest potential. And for that to happen, we have to become the leaders that we're meant to be. And so I discovered that leadership is always the problem and leadership is always the solution. And so I forced upon myself to become the decisive leader who communicates clearly and no longer reacts to situations emotionally, but responds effectively. And where leadership is concerned, and that's pillar number one of manning up as an entrepreneur, is leadership is great communication. So you can communicate with your business partners, with your clients and customers, with your employees, with your spouse, rather than holding it in, building resentment, and having ultimately an adversary relationship with these people. And, of course, being decisive one thing that has caused entrepreneurs a loss of money and a gain of stress and anxiety is indecision. Indecision has cost us more money, time, anxiety than making the wrong decision. And entrepreneurs must get into the habit of quickly making decisions. Doesn't mean it has to be the right decision every time. But when you make a decision, you quickly find out if it's the right decision or not. And if it's not, you course correct. And what I mean by that, and people say, well, then how do I become more decisive, Bedros? Usually I need all the information. I need to gather the information, weigh out my odds, and then get around to pulling the trigger. Well, by the time you do that, your competition has already pulled the trigger. And if it was the right decision, they've blown past you. If it was the wrong decision, they're about to course correct and then blow past you. It seems to cause more overwhelm, stress, and anxiety in people's lives. And so I teach my new coaching clients now, I teach them, you've got to make the small decisions first. You can't just say, I'm going to wait for the next big decision to come as an entrepreneur and then pull the trigger. That doesn't just happen. So I say, if it's date night, you decide where are we going? Are we going to eat first or see the movie? What movie are we going to see? What time are we going? And as we condition ourselves to make these small decisions, whether it's, you know, as as a group of friends on a weekend, are we going to the beach or are we going to go to the mountains and hike? You be the decision maker. When you get good at building your decision-making muscles, on the small decisions, when the big decisions come, you don't need to gather all the information because then you shoot from the hip, you shoot from the gut. And typically, and the General Colin Powell says this in his book, he calls it the 40-70 rule. He needs as little as 40% of the information to make a decision and as much as 70%. Notice we don't need 100% of the information to make a decision because we can always course correct. And so they're in leadership is being decisive, communicating well, and of course, most entrepreneurs are emotionally driven. That's just what what is part of our makeup. You know, we get excited, we wake up, and we're going to go dominate the world. Well, those emotions, if not controlled, force us to react negatively sometimes. We are going to have problems as entrepreneurs. You know, you are going to have competition. You are going to have a employee maybe steal money or steal customers and go and compete against you. But how you react versus how you respond determines your path of success. And so as an entrepreneur, you must get into the habit of responding effectively versus reacting emotionally and ruining your reputation or taking longer to recover from what should be a small, minute issue. And so that's, you know, manning up leadership is number one. Now we travel into clarity of vision and clarity of path. Pillar number two 
in manning up as an entrepreneur is that clarity of vision. What is it that you want from your business? See, I started Fit Body Bootcamp franchise in 2011. However, I didn't know if I wanted 100 locations worldwide or 5,000 locations worldwide. And I didn't know if I wanted 5,000 owners or if I wanted 5,000 locations with only 1,000 owners so that the average owner would have five locations. Since I had no clarity of my vision and didn't know when I wanted it by and didn't know how I was going to reach my goal, I was effectively just drifting through the entrepreneurial river. And wherever the currents took me is where I went. One day I was running ads in Inc. Magazine. The next day I'm running ads on Facebook. The next day I'm trying to buy an email list and send it out to them. And it was an ineffective way of marketing. Unfortunately, your, your employees see this and they go, holy smokes, this guy or gal does not know exactly what they're going to do with their company. They have no clarity of vision. They have no clarity of path. And they've got no deadline. So where pillar number two is concerned, entrepreneurial manning up, is we need clarity of vision. Where do you want your business to go? How is it going to look when it gets there? And what is the date that you want it to, to achieve this by? And if you can be clear on this and communicate this to the universe, to your clients, customers, to your staff, to your employees, then you are good to go. And the third and final pillar of manning up as an entrepreneur is to take your employees and get them to man up and become a high-performance team. See, employees are people who clock in late, clock out a little bit early, do the bare minimum with that passion to just keep their job. Whereas a team member, and this is why I'm very clear. In fact, I just I wrote a book. The book comes out next year. Um, and I talk about this. A team member is a group of people who are playing a game that they've agreed upon with the purpose to win. And I have a high-performance team. My coaching clients are building a high-performance team. And these, these high-performance teams exceed expectations, have, have a massive threshold limit of, of they know how to respond and not react. They don't fall apart when, when a client or customer is yelling at them over the phone because I've taught them to not take it personally. And that they are, the, you know, you've got a client who's upset. They're simply reacting to a situation. Your job is to respond, solve it, I'm sorry. We screwed up. Here's how we can make it right. Even taught them the three stages of apologizing. Apologizing isn't just, I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones. We screwed up or our software screwed up or our agent screwed up. And here's how we're going to make it right. And when you are able to build a high-performance team and you empower them with the tools they need to, to solve the problems they're about to face, man, you've got an unstoppable that is going to reach its potential 100% of the time. That is amazing. I mean, uh, and I do understand this about teams, and, you know, I've taken a lot of courses, High Performance Academy, obviously. I wanted to go back to pillar number one, though, because you said something very interesting right before you mentioned uh, Colin Powell. And I was just about to ask you, because you talked about the, um, what was it, the 40-70? The 40-70, Mm-hmm. And I was just about to ask you, when do you just go with your instinct, go with your gut? And then you answered the question before I could even get to it. But I think that's a big part of what entrepreneurs do. We tend to listen very closely to our instincts because typically our instincts are good. We do get caught in the weeds, been there, done it. We all do. But I think for the most part our instincts are good if we'll just calm down and act on them in an appropriate fashion. Absolutely. And, and this, is, this is really the challenge that most entrepreneurs face is they don't realize that they've had to make so many decisions already just to become an entrepreneur, to get that business oh, license, yeah. to incorporate, that they have really honed in their gut instincts, yet they don't believe and trust their gut instincts. So they go around asking other people for their opinions. And, and well, quite frankly, no one has a better opinion on your state of your business than you. Exactly. Exactly. I've had a website client one time. She was a lovely woman, but I really had to fire her because she absolutely did not trust her own opinion. Everything was, oh, but what about this? And what do you think about this? Like, I can't keep answering these questions over and over again. This is your project. This is your business. And finally, I just said, I'm sorry. I will finish this up, but our personalities are just never going to work together. I actually wanted to hit her with a frying pan. She had <laughs> n- no no concept of, of how powerful she could be if she would just quit questioning every thought that she had. 
and I felt sorry for her. But I, there, there came a point where I really couldn't take it. I was spending so much time babysitting her that, you know, first of all, my personality doesn't, doesn't allow for that. Second of all, I lost money on it because I was on the phone with her so many times just holding her hands. So, you know, sometimes you do just have to go, mm, we're done. Exactly. And I guess that's part of the decision-making process, too. And then you said something, too, in Pillar 2, about deadlines. And I really appreciate you saying that because, again, been there, done it. You can have these great dreams. You can have these wonderful ideas. But until you put a date to it, it's just kind of a notation on a whiteboard, isn't it? That's exactly right. And, you know, where clarity of vision is concerned, that is the number one indicator to your employees and to your team, whether you're a great leader or not, because if they are unclear on your vision and they see that, okay, you don't really have a goal of, for example, if we're selling franchises, they have a goal of selling 22 franchises, franchise locations per month. And the entire team knows that. Now, if we are unclear on that, then the team eventually says, you know what? I don't know if there's an end game here. And if they don't feel there's an end game and they don't feel the sense of security from the end game, very quickly, they've got one foot out the door looking for a new job. And this is why we end up, you know, so, so many of my new coaching clients end up telling me, you know, I just feel I've got this great employee. They're good at what they do, but I can sense they've checked out. And I go, how is the clarity of vision? Like, what do you want to achieve with your business? When do you want to achieve it by? And what is the path to achieving that? Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's work on that. And then through your actions, your team will see that, your communications, your team will understand that, and you will see how they go both feet back in again. Right. And when a team is engaged, as you mentioned, they really want to be part of the bigger solution. They're not just sitting at their keyboards or you know, behind the customer service desk waiting for instructions. They are all in. This has been my experience anyway. You know, once you give them the big picture and you invite them to participate – People are really willing to help. Absolutely right. They, they just want to be part of a solution like you do. The difference is you may have it in your head, but you have yet to, as you said, put a deadline to it, draw a path to it, and communicate it with everybody else. And so you see somewhat of the picture in your head, but if you can't communicate that with your team and your clients, then, oh, my gosh, that's, that's just a, you know, the kiss of death. Right, exactly. Systems, let's go to systems because I'm fascinated by systems. I think without them, you're just wandering around like a lost ball on the high grass. So how important to you when, when you're talking with your clients and, and with, your, um, with your employees, how important are those systems? I would love for our audience to know just how critical they can be. Absolutely. To me, systems are everything. And in fact, I look at the word system as an acronym, and you can break it down this way. Save yourself time, effort, and money. There you go. There's the system. And so when you put a system into place, you truly do save yourself time, effort, and money. Now, people ask, well, how do I create a system? So well, it's pretty easy. Systems are usually done either through technology or people. And all it is is a process of automating or duplicating an act that you're going to do over and over again. For example, the best example I can give of this is when someone calls Hewitt Packard for a customer issue and say, you know, the computer won't turn on. I've unplugged and replugged and restarted and it won't turn on. Now, Hewitt Packard probably knows what the answer is. And they have an entire customer service department who can type out, you know, email the answer back. But what a tremendous waste of time it is to constantly retype out, well, first do this, then hold down the, the, the reset button, and then wait 30 seconds, and then your computer should work. Now, of course, they can type that out probably 100 times a day. They can make it a canned response. In other words, we know that if this question comes in via email, then we have to send out this canned response. And so we've started creating you know, operation systems using simply Google Docs in the beginning. And Google Documents allowed us to have literally hundreds of canned response for our franchisees, for our software company that we have, for our uh, uh, online marketing company that we have. And this way, we're able to just have a 
instead of a dozen customer service reps, we can have two customer service reps literally cut and paste or drag and drop a response to a customer because you're going to get that same question over and over again. There's no point in typing it out. And so where systems are concerned, you have to sit back and ask yourself, can I use technology such as Google uh, Canned Response or Google Docs, or can I use people to replicate and automate this process to serve my customers better and to save my company money? If the answer is yes, then we go, how do we do this? How do we create the system? For example, for our franchisees, we've created a systems manual that literally says how to find a franchise location, how to negotiate the lease, how to negotiate the TI, the tenant improvement, how to ask for three to five months of free rent, how to make sure that your rent increase uh, year after year is, is, doesn't exceed more than 2%. And by having a punch list, they no longer call us at our corporate office and say, all right, I think I found a, a storefront, but it's 4,500 square feet. Is it too big? Well, they just look at their punch sheet and say, the average Fit Body Bootcamp franchise is going to be 2,500 to 3,500 square feet. So a 4,000 foot you know, location is too big. There's no need for them to waste their time or our time. We've created a systems process, a systematic process for them to find and negotiate their lease. Now, once they do that, they go to the next page of the systems manual, how to build out their location and you know, what to order first. For example, our flooring takes about six weeks to come. So right on that systems manual, it explains, order the flooring first. Here's how you're going to measure for it. If you don't know how to measure for it, then call us. We still have the customer support people in place, but through creating a form of process, we've eliminated probably about 60% of our customer support calls and emails. So now that when we get these unique calls and emails, they're exactly that. They're very unique to a person's individual situation versus you know, telling someone, no, no, 4,000 square feet is too big. You have a location of this. Does that make sense? It, it act- Yes, very much. I actually had a very long conversation with a, a gentleman last night in California about systems and creating these, these processes so you're not doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm actually sending him a spreadsheet so he can follow himself around for the next week and find out where he's bleeding energy and doing the same things over and over again. Uh, so you're not going to like it, and it's going to be painful, but you'll be able to figure out what you should not be doing quickly. Yeah. That's exactly right. And in fact, you know, it's not – see, for mark, marketing is so sexy. It's so fun. It's so exciting for an entrepreneur that we will go out there and try and run Facebook ads and get referrals and find the newest and best way to, to create a, a real neat sizzle reel video that we can put out there into social media and hope that it goes viral so we tend to do the fun stuff more frequently. And the truth of the matter is systems is the foundation that you're building your business on. Yet because it's not sexy, there's nothing exciting about you know, sitting there and documenting an entire process. Then because it's not sexy, most entrepreneurs avoid it, bury their head in the sand about it, um, go, well, it's all in my head, but I don't know how to put it on paper. Well, I, you know, I had a, a client of mine who's a, a three-time New York Times best-selling author. He said, well, it's all in my head, but I, I, don't, I don't know how to document this. I said, well, I think you make enough money that you can hire a really high-end right. assistant. And they said, well, yep. what am I going to do with the high-end assistant? I said, have that high-end assistant walk with you everywhere with a notepad and a voice recorder and everything you do to, for your business, you know, because he closes, he gets high-end coaching clients into his business. And the script that you use, you know, the process, because he does a, uh, sends out an email to a prospect, follows it up with a text message, and then on the text message says, check your email. There's a link in it for us to schedule a call. Then he gets them on the phone, and then he sells them on his high-end uh, mentoring program. And so I said, you can document this. Now, if you're not willing to document it, for 30 days, have an admin walk around with you, and they will document that process. Because they'll say, hey, give me your iPhone or whatever platform he's using to send out a text, and let me just document that text message. Let me document the process in which you send things out in. And so he says, holy smokes. And so the truth of the matter is we just become absolutely lazy. And so money does solve the problem of being lazy because you can hire someone to walk around with you and document your entire process of running a business. Oh, that's exactly right. And, you know, the truth is if you don't have, and I've seen this over and over again, I did it to myself. I mean, I'm my hand's in the air going, oops, 
when I first started my business in 2000, 2001, I didn't document anything. I was all by myself. You know, I was building my business. And then, you know, when it came time to hire teams, I was too busy. And I didn't create SOPs until I just had to. And I was mad. I was mad at myself for putting it off for so long because really there there wasn't that much to it. But it took an entire week of my time away from the sexy stuff. You know, like you say, the, the fun stuff. For me, fun is building websites at 2 in the morning. I couldn't do that because I had to create these SOPs. But once I did it, they're out there. They can be edited. Everybody's got them. And nobody has to bug me with questions that, like you said, have been answered over and over again. You have to have them. You that's, really must have them. That's exactly right. And it's, they're not fun, so let's just <laughs> we agree they're not fun. But you got to do it. So, okay, and you know so, what? They're not, they're not fun. That's, that's exactly it. They're no. not fun. But this goes back to leadership, what I talked about, because the leader has to do things at times that are not fun to get their business to reach its fullest potential. And so, you know, I said in the very beginning that leadership is the problem. Leadership is the solution. So plenty of things are not going to be fun, creating systems, standard operating procedures, uh, Hiring someone and having to train them, come on, what do we want to do as entrepreneurs? We hire them and we throw them in the deep end and we hope that they can swim and figure it out. And that is No, that's an leadership. SOP too. The hiring mm-hmm. somebody exactly to get them right. on your team, that's also an SOP. Everything you do, that's exactly. pretty much. Okay, so texting, I'm, I'm finding that fascinating because these days, I mean, everybody's stuck to their device. You heard mine go off just now, which I apologize for, but I'm getting weather alerts, so I have to kind of have it near me. But I'm not one of those people that has my hand stuck to my phone, but so many people do. I mean, digital devices are really where we're finding people these days. And I'm thinking, and, and please, you know, share your thoughts on this, but I'm thinking if you don't have some kind of a texting system set up, you're missing an awful lot of opportunity with the people who want to be in touch with you. Is that correct? Absolutely right. In fact, I have a process called the Monster Follow-Up System. And the Monster Follow-Up System I created because my sales team at our franchise headquarters was telling me, look, you know, we call people who fill out an application to become a Fit Body Bootcamp owner, but all we get is their voicemail. And then they never return our call. Mm -hmm. And then we send them an email, and the email gets lost into some black hole. I said, all right, oh, yeah. guys, let's create a monster, monster follow-up system. And so, so we, we've got a platform that we use. And the monster follow-up is literally you send out an email. So, for example, if you filled out an application on our website, Tone of Fit Body Bootcamp, you would get an email from us that says, hey, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Here are two dates and times on our calendar. Just click our calendar link, and you can see two dates and times to schedule your getting to know you call. Um, about 10% of the people respond to that email and schedule their getting to know you call. Then we followed up with a phone call and say, hey, we sent you a letter, an email, with the opportunity to set up your schedule, um, your getting to know you call. Well, typically, that call ends up going to a voicemail 90% of the time. But then we right. follow that call up with a text message. And here's the unique thing. 60% of the time, they respond to the text message and they say, yes, I will check my email and schedule that getting to know you call. So the text message, so our process is email, followed up with a call about the email, followed up with the text message about the email. And that text message gives us a 60, sometimes 68% response rate that yes, I will check my email, set up that getting to know you call. And for us to close someone on a Fit Body Bootcamp franchise, we need that first call to get set up. That is the first domino that gets all the other dominoes to fall. So without texting, and, and by the way, it's such a non-intrusive way to communicate with people. It's very quick. You're not on the phone with them. They can, they can put you on the back burner for a couple of minutes to think about their answer rather than being on the phone. So what we found is using the platform, and we use a platform called Scipio that we discovered. Um, if, you know, people always ask me, what platform do you use? Do you custom make it? No, just, it's just called Scipio. Anyone can buy it off the shelf. And um, you can literally communicate. I was just going to ask, so we, just so you know, I was going to email yeah. you and go, what, what is <laughs> So thank you for yeah, that. It, 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 yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's Scipio. It's a great platform. And we have one person manning Scipio, and that person literally communicates back and forth with this person because they, they might ask some other qualifying questions. Well, 
okay, it's $25,000 by the franchise, but what is the monthly royalty fee? And so we'll, we'll tell them what the monthly royalty fees. And they'll say, well, are there any other hidden fees? Nope, nope, there are no hidden fees. In fact, we're known as the anti-franchise franchise. We don't fee you to death, blah, blah, blah. And so we alleviate so many objections and conditions that they may think up and therefore stops, stops them from getting on the phone with us. And so every time we overcome these objections and conditions via text message in a very non-intrusive way, we go right back to getting them to the straight line, which is, so then, let's go ahead and schedule your getting to know you call. And oftentimes, it's through a back and forth of text messages that we're able to schedule their getting to know you call, which ultimately leads them into, you know, they're either the right fit for a franchise or they're not. So you're doing two things, if I'm correct. You're doing what I would term a gentle nag, and you're pre-qualifying. Mm-hmm. Correct. That's brilliant. And, 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 and by the way... They're pre-qualifying us. They're, they want to know what are they. They don't want to waste their time on the phone and get sold. So mm-hmm. they're asking, what are the hidden fees? What are the monthly fees? What are the expectations? Are you how strict are you guys as a franchise? And so we help really overcome all those questions before we ever end up on the phone with them. And it's it's really neat to see how they say, oh, I don't have time to get on the phone. To all of a sudden, after you've answered all their questions over text, they go, oh yeah, I can make time to get on the phone. Yeah, I would think so because, like you said, you have you know taken those objections and dealt with them in a very responsible way. So now they're going, okay, now I see possibilities. Now let me ask mm-hmm. you this. This is an oddball question because I I really hate my cell phone. I do. It's very few people have my cell phone number. My attitude is it's the last you know place I can keep private. <laughs> Nobody can find me. <laughs> it's just it's an odd odd thing, but. If you're going to have you know, this kind of a system set up, do you recommend that people have two cell phones, one for business, one for personal? Because, I mean, this thing could be going off all the time. Good question. So Scipio, and I'm sure other platforms have this too, but Scipio has, it has an app. And so as long as you download the Scipio app, you have a different number. So you're not really texting from your cell phone number. Oh. Scipio gives you, a, gives you a number based on your area code um, that Perfect. you're in. Yeah, and I love that because whether you're using a desktop to, to send a text message from or you're using your phone and the app, it's never coming from your actual phone number. And then, of course, if you're a small business and you're going to use your phone and the app, well, as long as the app is turned off, you know, you're not being pinged by all these text messages. Right. Oh, I am looking into that. Thank you. I think I love you. You're welcome. You just answered. You just actually solved a big problem for me, so I really appreciate that. Now, what else did you want to kind of share? We've got, oh, we've got 22 minutes. I told you this was the quickest hour on the Internet. Okay, so is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? And then I kind of wanted to go into philanthropy because you've got a lot going on there as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, there is one more thing. I mean, since, since we do want to impart the best marketing message we can here, with, with those listening to your show, um, you, you know, the Internet has forced us to become better marketers and better entrepreneurs because the barrier to entry into being an entrepreneur is so low now. You can make a free website using WordPress. You can start accepting money for free using PayPal. You, know, PayPal. you can start marketing, mm-hmm. right? You can, you can start marketing uh, by creating how-to videos on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram for free. And so people go, gee, the competition is huge. There's competition everywhere. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is competing against me. That's right. The barrier to entry has gotten lower because of the Internet. And that's a good thing because the Internet and social media has also made selling easier and reaching more people for a lot less dollars has become easier. And so the one thing that people are so slow to adapt is they are most entrepreneurs are still selling what they do instead of who they are. And I, I always say it this way. I say no longer are people buying what you sell. They're buying who you are. They know that I'm a fitness franchise. I don't need to keep banging the drums that I'm a fitness franchise and we're a great fitness franchise and we're a responsible fitness franchise and we'll, we'll you know, do support you in your marketing and your sales and your systems, et cetera. They know that. They saw it on our website. They want to know who am I buying from. And so the more transparent you can be in your marketing, And the more vulnerable you can be in your marketing, and I do this through video-based marketing. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I've gone from predominantly email marketing to now email and video-based marketing. 
And so I give people a peek into my life. And, and you could look at what I do. You could look at what Gary Vaynerchuk does, what Grant Cardone does. But the more people see who you are, what you're all about, whether they like you or not, likability has become a big factor, whether they trust you. And you can build the no like, and trust factor faster than ever through video marketing than through just sending out emails or postcards or running ads in publications. And so, you know, if there was any one big marketing message that I can give away here is that full transparency and authenticity in your videos, put at least three to five videos a week out there to your market space. And sometimes you're, as you're going to talk about whatever your product is, you might showcase a little bit of your family life, or here's my dog, or here's a tour of our corporate office. And the more behind the scenes insight you can give people, the deeper the no like, and trust factor. And the deeper the no like, and trust factor, the lower resistance they have when they have to purchase. Oh, absolutely. And I would imagine that you found this as well. I've had a number of people over the years come to me that I don't know who they are. I haven't necessarily connected with them on social media. But they'll say, oh, so-and-so says you're the best web developer. Oh, so-and-so says you're the best in the virtual assistance industry. And I'll ask who so-and-so is, and it's oftentimes somebody I've never heard of. Then I will have to track them down, introduce myself, and say, hey, thank you. Why are you doing this? Thank you. I really appreciate it. But what are you seeing that makes you so willing to refer me? It's an interesting kind of a process. That's exactly right, and, and your, your show, your show is that vehicle that really exposes you, your personality, what you do, why you do it, your purpose, and people go, you know what, I really like her. I like how she just says what she means, and she means what she says, and those who don't like that are welcome to go elsewhere, so you're really going to always right. attract the perfect clients and customers, and they know what to expect. I've got a wonderful working relationship. And that's exactly right. And I was looking at some of your videos on your website this morning, and you know, you have you just trot out all kinds of very pertinent information, and you do it in a fun, kind of quick and easy to digest kind of a way. And I think that's what people want. You know, they don't want to listen to an hour long dissertation on why you should be part of this particular franchise. They just kind of want to know who you are, what you're up to. You, you mentioned cats and dogs. One of my little cats. I have a little black cat named the Vicar. He's a black cat with a little white priest collar. Does not take his holy order seriously at all. He gets Christmas cards on Facebook. He really <laughs> does. <laughs> so, you, know, you just the more you can share about who you are with your pet lover or franchise owner, you're right. People really do want to know, like us, and trust us. No question about it. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And well, so when does I, your I, know, new, I know you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, I was going to say, I know you, you, you talked about philanthropy and, and, and service, mm. and so I was going to tap into that, but I know you had a question. Well, I wanted to know when your new book comes out. Oh, so I just finished writing my book, Man Up. Ironically, the book is called Man Up, um, Cut the BS and Dominate Your Path. And it comes out July of 2018. Uh, the publisher is Ben Bella, and uh, they has been a great publisher, and the book comes out July of 2018. And um, th this has really been my journey of going from an amateur entrepreneur to a professional entrepreneur who can now scale practically any business that has potential. I can help scale it. And so it's not because I have a unique power. It's because those three areas that I just talked about in manning up an effective leader, clear in, clear in your path, in your vision, and of course, building a high performance team and setting expectations for that team. And so... Man Up really goes deep into that with actual lessons on how to accomplish all of that, and it's just been my life's work up to this point. I will. When will it be ready for pre-order? Uh, July 10th of 2018. And now okay. we do have a we do have a uh, early bird interest list, and so if anyone's interested, they can just go to manup.com and they can just put their name and email address okay. in there, and we'll notify them when they're available on Amazon. I will be doing that. Okay, so let me know when it comes out, and I will get the information out to my audience. Thank you. Okay, philanthropy. I mean, you've got a lot going on. I mean, you went from being you know, depressed, having anxiety, and now you're 
you're getting ready to donate, what is it, a million dollars to one of my favorite yes. charities, Toys for Tots. Yeah, Toys for Tots. So my dear friend Craig Ballantyne, who's the author of The Perfect Day Formula, yep. uh, one, a wonderful I have that book. About, you know, uh-huh, right, then you know he's all about personal discipline and structure right. for entrepreneurs. Um, he, he has an office in Denver, and one day he reached out to me. This was in October of, gee, maybe 2013. And he said, hey, Bedros, um, I just discovered that, you know, the Denver chapter of Toys for Tots is always in more need for toys than any other chapter across the United States. I said, well, what are you going to do about it, Craig? And he said, well, I'm thinking of maybe I'm reaching out to you and I'm reaching out to a couple of my entrepreneur friends. And maybe you guys can all come out to Denver on, a, you know, a particular Saturday in December and we can just go shopping at Walmart. So we literally just that we we. Uh, six of us went shopping and we we bought sixty thousand dollars worth of toys at in a, Walmart. A local Denver, in Walmart, yep. And I would we, have we paid to have seen toys. that. <laughs> Let me tell you, we felt so awkward being a, in a Walmart. I don't even know my way around <laughs> any a grocery store, and I haven't been in a Walmart for years. <laughs> not, not because I'm hotty totty, but because I just don't. I just never make the time. I just always order things on Amazon that I need. I do. Too. So, I order everything I need. My my litter, yeah. my cat litter, my cat food comes from Walmart to my front porch. I don't go there. Don't you love that? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. And so I felt so lost in a in a department store, and uh, thankfully, you know, you know, people are there to help you. And so we found the toys we needed. We 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 went through the buying process. And so later that night, we're sitting at a restaurant and, you know, feeling good about the accomplishment of, of helping out. And, of course, Craig brought up the next point. He said, you know, the $62,000 of toys that we bought barely makes a dent because there's something like 400,000 children in the greater Denver metro area who are going to wake up on Christmas morning with not a single gift to open. And all of a sudden, the, you know, you're feeling so happy about yourself and you realize we, we didn't even make a dent. We didn't even make a dent. So every year since then, Craig has organized a bigger and bigger event. And in fact, last year we ended up buying a quarter million dollars worth of toys. And so I said, you know, what are we doing playing small fries? What if just Fit Body Boot Camp alone commits to $1 million in 2017? And so, again, I started to reverse engineer our numbers. Again, I'm, I'm a very numbers-oriented person in that way. Okay, so we've got over 500 locations worldwide of our franchise. Um, we sell something called a web special, which is pretty much if you go to any Fit Body Bootcamp website, you'll always see a 14-day fat furnace for $47 or a 21-day rapid fat loss program for $67. It's a, it's a low barrier program for people to buy online and then go to their local Fit Body Bootcamp and work out for a period of time to see if they like the program. I said, what if I create a unique web special that's 28 days long and we promote it in the month of November? And if I can get 500 locations, each to sell 26 of these in that month for $77 a piece, then we'll have raised a million dollars. And then I will pay for all the buses because, you know, all the Fit Body Bootcamp owners who want to fly out to California and go to 10 different uh, targets. Now, we've partnered with Target. We did it last year with Target. And uh, this year we're doing them. So last year we did, you know, whatever, a quarter million with Target. This year, we're going to do a million dollars. And so I figured, you know, I'll get all the buses. I'll feed everybody. We'll get the DJ. We'll make it a really big thing where 10 different buses go to 10 different targets. We spend a million dollars and buy a million dollars of toys in the first week of December. And then, of course, we come back to our headquarters where we have food and beverages and just, you know, run a whole party and make it a really fun thing. And so it's, it's further proof that oftentimes we don't think big enough. And as Craig kept saying, you know, we're still not making an impact, we're still not making an impact, I decided that doing things the old way of getting our entrepreneur friends together and saying, hey, look, just spend whatever your heart desires isn't enough. I had to commit to a number, and then I had to reverse engineer that number. And so that's what we're doing with Toys for Tots this year. And, and by golly, we are going to get a million dollars worth of toys just through Fitbody. I think that's amazing. It's an amazing story, and thank you for doing that. Because, listen, we all remember being, you know, kids waiting for Santa. <laughs> you know, is Santa going to come? Is Santa yeah. going to come? And, you know, I grew up in a family with a lot of kids and not a whole lot of money. So each Christmas was a little bit, mm, is there going to be anything there? So I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And it's tough then, on those kids. You know, they don't understand. 
you know, having come from a from a foreign country, the, our first two years in the United States, I, I had no toys. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure my parents didn't know about Toys for Tots or maybe Toys for Tots wasn't around in the 80s. I don't know. But um, so I can literally put myself in their shoes and go, oh, well, that's a bummer. You know, to wake up on Christmas morning and have no toys. So if we have the capability and if it's that simple to take a million dollars and reverse engineer it where each location of our franchise just needs to sell 26 of them at $77 a piece, why aren't we doing it? And it had the added benefit of getting more people into the location. Yeah, I mean, there were just benefits all the way around. It wasn't you just going, hey, guys, I want you to donate 77 bucks, you know, 10 or 20 times, and thanks. I mean, you actually, this is a business decision as well. Exactly right. Exactly right. And so anytime I think up a decision, whether it's for philanthropy or whether it's, it's you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to build a new marketing system, I always find a way to say, how is gonna, how's this going to be a win-win for all parties involved? So our franchisees, just like you said, they get, each of them should get an average of 26 new leads and clients. You know, we on the corporate side are raising a million dollars, and every single penny of that will get used towards buying toys and gifts. And it's, it's an absolute win-win. Now, even on, I'll go deeper on the corporate side. I mean, let's not make any mistake about it. On the marketing end, my marketing mind is already going. And we are already, uh, Chelsea, who, who helped, in fact, set up this, this podcast interview here, um, she's already in oh, contact with Toys for Tots. Yeah, she, she's in contact with Toys for Tots and Target and saying, look, you know, we're going to collaborate and we're doing a million dollars. We need you guys to put out press releases and go to the media and say what – amazing things Fit Body Bootcamp is doing to raise a million dollars. And so I'm using it as an opportunity as well to expose my franchise. So it's a, it's a win for Toys for Tots. It's a win for Target. It's a win for my franchisees. And it's a win for us, the franchisor. And I think those are the best propositions we can make, a win, 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 win. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely brilliant. And it, I guess I'm, I'm always a bit surprised when you hear it laid out so succinctly and so clearly. It's like, well, duh. You know, it's just, you have that moment like, well, of course. I mean, it's so simple. Why didn't I think of that? But we don't, do we? We have to, I think we kind of get caught up in everything that we're doing during the day. And something so elegant as what you just laid out may not come to the forefront of your mind until it's ready to be birthed, I guess. But so many solutions really are elegant in their simplicity is what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. And this, this goes back to when you look at how simple Elon Musk's model of an electric car is or mm-hmm. Steve Jobs model of the iPhone and the simplicity of it. I mean, Holy cow, you know, old phones used to flip. They had a hinge, they had an antenna you would pull up the iPhone. Now is just so simple, nothing to pull, no hinge to break. And it's the most simplest models. Like I said, the most elegant things that end up making the biggest impact. And with with iPhone, I mean, they have not branched out into a whole lot of different things. They just keep making the iPhone better and better. They're not selling you a whole bunch of junk. No, that's exactly right. And you know, we're pretty much pretty much going through the whole book here. But in the book, I talk about you know, if you really want to be good with your solution, your product, your business, do one thing and do it better than anybody else. You know. Fit Body Boot Camp, we, we have 30-minute fat loss workouts, and we do 30-minute fat loss workouts better than anybody else. We don't sell supplements. We don't sell, you know, uh, gear. We don't sell protein shakes. We don't sell any of that, that stuff. Do, do our clients want them? Yes. And we just refer them to local supplement stores or, or wherever. But we do one thing, and we do better than anybody else. And, and, and Apple has figured that out about their iPhone and about their devices, and they have dominated the market space because of it. Oh, absolutely. I just went from, I tend to keep my vehicles and my phones until I fully amortize them to the point of, okay, that's not going to work anymore. But I finally just switched from my iPhone that I bought in 2010 and upgraded to an uh, i7 Plus. I'm in love with it. It's expensive. I mean, I cried a bit, I admit it. But I'll keep it for a number of years. And I'm telling you, this difference just between I think it was an iPhone 5 that I had it's in my closet I keep my old phones I have my old Blackberry in there I have some hinged phones in there <laughs> it's just like a little <laughs> it's going to be a museum in there one day but say, you, know, you know 
Huh? You really can't open up a museum. That's amazing. <laughs> I think I probably can. I'm not entirely sure. I don't have my old bag phone in there. I'll have to take a look. <laughs> you know, back in the day when everybody had to have that bag phone that sat between the you know yeah. the seats in the car, and they were so proud of it. It didn't work for beans, but you had to have it. I had one. But my point is that you know I I made that switch. I stayed with with iPhone and. The strides that they have made is just amazing, amazing. So you're right. They do one thing, and they do it extraordinarily well. And they have very loyal customers. Like, no, I'm not going to buy every time a new phone comes out. But when I do buy, I'm in love with it, and I hang on to it. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk a bit about what you have going on in 2018. Yeah, yeah, I would love to talk about that. So what what I've got going on in 2018 is I've chosen to hyper-focus like I have in the last three years, which is really, again, another entrepreneurial discipline. And so our goal is to take Fit Body Boot Camp from our current number of 540 locations and grow it to 2,500 locations by the year 2020. And so for that to happen, we need to double our pace of new locations per month from 22 to 44 locations per month starting January 2018. And so already I'm reverse engineering and building the team of how is our marketing going to look? Are we going to have to spend twice the dollars to get twice the, twice the franchises? Or can we spend a third more the dollars but get twice the franchises because we'll have less leads falling through the cracks if I tighten up the system? So it's funny because this – this last and final quarter of 2017 is the year of tightening up a process for us. And all entrepreneurs have to revisit their processes and systems. The systems and processes you have in place when you're making $5 million a year are different than when you're making $50 million a year. They just simply are. And we can't run a $50 million a year company off a $5 million a year systems and processes. And so I'm in the process of tightening up the systems and strategies that we need to double the number of franchises we get in, in December, or, uh, starting January of 2018. And at the same time, I'm working with my publisher and trying to figure out what are we going to do to really get man up in the hands of, my goal is 50,000 business owners, entrepreneurs, people who have ideas within the first six months. I would love to get man up in the hands of 50,000 uh, readers uh, between July uh, 10th of 2018 and, of course, December. And for that to happen, we're coming up with, you know, again, from podcasts and shows to be on to having uh, swapping out my speaking fee at big uh, in exchange for bulk orders of my books, and, um, w- which is really neat. This is, I've, I've never gone through a, a, a book process. You know, you think, okay, I'm going to write a book and the publisher is going to do their thing. And then the publisher comes no, not says, anymore. All right. Just so our audience <laughs> exactly. knows, they, I, I, they can't do that anymore. They don't have the budget no. for and it. I, exactly. And I had no idea. And so it's a learning curve for me to be able to sit here and strategize with, with a publisher and go, okay, well, I can swap out my speaking fees for bulk orders of my books. We can, I can have you know, my, my friends who are influencers you know, uh, re-interview me and, and you know, make offers for the books. But, but it's really neat. We you know, talk about virtual book tours. We're talking about – you know, tours of actually in person. And so as we schedule all this out for late 2018, um, I'm thinking, gee, we have to make this book a New York Times bestseller because I really do believe that so many great entrepreneurs have such amazing potential are suffering in silence because they don't have my book. They don't have this wisdom that I didn't have. And so I have to do that as I grow my empire with Fit Body Boot Camp. But uh, I'm definitely up for the challenge. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt you a bit. Now, is it going to be on Amazon as well? Indeed. It'll be on Amazon and all bookstores worldwide. Okay. And uh, people always ask me, you know, are you going to have an audio version of it? Yes, and I will be the mm-hmm. one actually reading it on the audio version. Okay, good. And I was going to ask you that, too, because I'm one of the – look, I read. I read all the time. I have three – two iPads and an iPhone. I have books open on all of them. I have about 3,000 physical books in my house, my garage, and on my iPad app, uh, my Kindle app, I've got something close to approaching 7,000 books. I read. It's I love, love, love to read. I've read since I was three years old. 
but part of me, and I will not listen to a fiction book, I rarely read fiction anyway, but when I'm working, when I'm deep in, you know, got my elbows deep into a website, I often will want to hear something, to learn something while I'm working, because a lot of what I can do in web development is, it's rote to me, I don't even have to think about it anymore. But I will turn on an audiobook and listen to it with my left ear, if that makes any sense. And I'm working (laughs) with my right ear. (laughs) Again, I know that doesn't make visual sense, but it's how I operate. And right now I'm listening to Mel Robbins, The Five Second Rule. And I've listened to this book half a dozen... Oh, I'm telling you. And I've listened to this thing about half a dozen times, and each time you will hear... My desk is an L shape. My iPad is over to the left. I'm facing the wall on the right. And all of a sudden, my head will just snap to the left. I'm going to give myself whiplash. (laughs) Take one. What? Go back. Go back. Say that again. (laughs) So you always always hear something new. And I think that having that audio component is really important to people like me who, you know, learn by listening and doing and breaking things. Exactly right. I'm very much much the same way. Oh, good. (laughs) Well, listen, definitely I would love to invite you to come back in 2018. So if you would have Chelsea you know, put me back on your list for 2018, if you're willing. Oh, I am honored. Absolutely. Count me in, and I absolutely appreciate it. Oh, good. We well, see what I did there. You couldn't tell me no on the radio, could you? <laughs> I can't. Tricky, huh? no <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, Beatrice, listen, tell our audience one more time where people can find you on the web. Yeah, so the best place to find me is uh, on, on my website, manup.com, or on social media, you know, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, at bedroskoolian.com, or at bedroskoolian, I should say. I think I mispronounced your name at the top. It's Koolian, not Killian. I'm sorry. No okay, worries so, at all. Um, I probably, my name is mispronounced all the time, but I do apologize. Thank you so much for being with me here today. It has been a pleasure and an honor speaking with you. And as always the case, this podcast hour went way too fast. And I thank you for all of the wonderful tips and the advice that you shared with our audience. And today's episode was sponsored by my company, Your Office on the Web. If you're looking for full-on business creation services such as web development, virtual assistance, online business management, social media marketing, and so much more, please visit Your Office on the Web. And be sure to look for Bedros, manup.com, look for him on social media, and look for us on iTunes. Just look for your partner in Success Radio, <clears throat> excuse me, and take us along on your success journey. Thank you so much. You can find Denise Griffiths at yourofficeontheweb.com or at gotagovirtualnow.com. Thank you for joining us on your partner in Success Radio. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop! At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS, wireless, figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop! At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS, wireless, figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.